In this video, I'm heading over to the Sonduck Film Channel and recreating one of their best tutorials. I'll show you how to build the entire scene, light it for that cinematic look, and add a stylish design touch, all inside DaVinci Resolve. Okay, let's start with our first scene. For this effect, we need three background nodes, one for the main background and one for each of our two circles. Let's add an ellipse mask and connect it to the mask input of the first background node. We'll make this a big circle and position it at the bottom. Great! Now do the exact same thing for the second background node, but position this circle at the top. Now, select the main background node and in the inspector, let's pick a nice medium gray color. And scene 1 is designed. On to scene 2, the shooting star. Add a new white background node. Mask it with a small ellipse mask for the head of the star. Then, add a polygon mask and draw a simple triangle for the tail. Just like that, you have your shape. Now you can add a transform node to change its position. And for the cool part, to create multiple copies, we will add a multi-merge node. Connect your star output to the multi-merge. You can dial in as many copies as you want. And now you can control the position and size of each copy directly through the multi-merge inspector sitting. Next up, the archway. This is a great trick. Add a rectangle mask. In the inspector, uncheck solid and increase the border width. Now, drag the corner radius all the way up to make it an arch. Set the rotation to 90 degrees. Here's a pro tip for easy scaling. Right click on the height value and choose expression. Now simply drag the plus sign over to the width value. Now, when you change the height, the width changes with it. To create the tunnel effect, let's add a duplicate node. Increase the size value. I'll set the copies to 20. As you can see, the thickness is too much, so just go back to the original rectangle mask and decrease the border width. You can adjust the size and number of copies to get the perfect look. Now for the door. Add a new white background. Now, instance our archway mask by copying it and pressing Ctrl plus Shift plus V. On this new instance, right-click the solid checkbox and select D instance, then check the box. This creates a solid white shape at the end of our tunnel. To create the floor, add another background node, then a rectangle mask. After the background node, press Ctrl plus space and add a transform node. Make sure it's the one without XF in the name, so we get the 3D controls. Increase the pitch control all the way to 1. Now use the Y position and zoom controls to make it fit perfectly as a floor. and our final shape, the simple doorway. Let's create a white rectangle to act as our door. Now, copy these two nodes and paste them. Merge them together. On the copy, we'll add that same 3D transform node. Crank the pitch up to one again, but this time, check horizontal flip. Now use the X and Y position to fix its placement and the mask's width to get the right size for a floor reflection. Let's define a light source. For our first scene, select the background node for the bottom circle. Change its type from solid color to gradient. Move the gradient points to create a hard, focused light coming from our light source. Now do the same for the top circle, but this time make the white color a much darker gray. It's a reflection, so it shouldn't be as bright. For the shooting star, we'll do the same. Make the circle a gradient and set the main background to a darker color. To add a nice haze, I'll add a new light gray background behind the circle, mask it with a big ellipse, and crank up the soft edge to give it a nice atmospheric glow. For the archway, it's all about the floor. Change the floor's background node to a gradient to make it look like light is spilling out from the doorway. And make the same for doorway scene. Change the floor's background node to a gradient to make it look like light is spilling out from the doorway. We went from flat shapes to cinematic scenes with just a few gradients. Now for the final style that ties it all together. First, a grain node. You can adjust the power and size to your taste. I also like to go into the spread graph and pull the black levels down a bit to remove grain from the darkest shadows. Next, a glow node. I'm using a plugin called Neo Glow, which I love. By the way, you can get a 10% discount through my link in the description. I'll raise the radius and lower the intensity. To give it that cinematic breathing effect, let's duplicate the glow. On the second one, go to frame zero, Set the radius to zero and add a keyframe. Then go forward 10 frames and max it out. Smooth these keyframes in the spline and set them to loop. You can do the exact same thing with a brightness node to create a subtle flicker. 
for movement, add a standard transform node at the very end and create a simple keyframe animation on the size to make a slow zoom in. And one last stylistic touch, a posterized time node. This lowers the frame rate to give you a cool stop motion feel. I'll link a video that explains this node in more detail. Now you can simply copy these effect nodes and paste them onto each of your scenes. The goal of this video was to teach you the workflow for creating custom shapes and a cinematic look. What you do with text, characters, and your own creativity is up to you. I hope you found this useful. See you in the next video.